Hi, I'm Adam. This is Kevin. And we are Tech Guys Who Invest. This is the place for business people and investors to learn all about investing. We offer a fresh perspective on what it's like to have a day job while investing. And we share lessons learned on our investing journey. Our vision is to educate and entertain you while adding tons of value to your daily commute. Welcome to our show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Tech Guys Who Invest podcast, where each week you learn how to invest wisely and safely. This episode is all about asset protection. There's nothing worse than losing an asset you've already purchased because you thought it was a great asset only to lose it through litigation. That would absolutely suck. That's why we're bringing on an expert to tell you why asset protection is important and how to do it. But first, let's learn about our guest, Scott Smith. No one wants to get sued, but let's face it, if you're playing the real estate game, it's only a matter of time. Let me introduce you to Scott Smith, a new breed of real estate attorney with a great sense of humor and a gift for simplifying the complex. His Austin startup, Royal Legal Solutions, has a different take on protecting real estate investments and already serves thousands of clients across all 50 states. As a former litigation attorney, Scott has a deep understanding of how lawsuits really work. More importantly, he is a real estate investor himself with property in 10 states. Now he's sharing his information with the world and is committed to helping other real estate investors protect their futures. Get ready to take your game to the next level as Scott shares advanced techniques like how to structure your entity structure to make yourself nearly invincible or how to create an investment dream team. Without further ado, here is the conversation with Scott Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Tech Guys Who Invest. We're so excited to have Scott Smith, an asset protection attorney, on the show today. Scott, welcome. Hey, great to be here with you guys. I'm stoked. Awesome. Well, we got to first start with understanding what is an asset protection attorney? Uh, Yeah, well, an asset protection attorney is really just somebody who like really focuses on how do you create wealth and make sure that you never backslide, right? So I got into this because... Uh, a friend of mine lost $3 million from a single lawsuit and he was very well insured. And that really keyed me to the fact that says, Hey man, you know, when we're out there looking at how do we accomplish wealth, we need to make sure that we aren't going to have the major setbacks. And that's what an asset protection attorney uh, is really focused on is uh, what are the limitations of your insurance? You know, where does uh, entity structuring start to make sense? How do you streamline that for your taxes and your CPA? And how do you plan with your state planning? Like all of the operational back end uh, that happens, you know, after you create the money. Wow. Yeah, that that's really a kind of a noble uh, cause, I think, to take up there. And I'm sure many investors appreciate that because losing that kind of money when you think you're protected has to be uh, crushing, right? Um, yeah. I mean, in a couple of different ways, right? It's not just crushing financially because you have to take the step backs with it. It's crushing emotionally. And it's right. not just actually the money. It's everything else that happened in the progress of losing the money. So like the, getting sued um, in this country, you can get sued for an unlimited amount of money, right? Um, and during that lawsuit, people equated as as up there with like getting a divorce on like how bad it is, right? Yeah. And what the emotional tolls are. And the great part is, is if you have the proper asset protection, you take the proactive steps, what you do is that you're then able to never have to worry about ever being in that situation because you've already built the castle of protection around you. And that makes sure that even in the worst case scenarios that you're going to be just fine. Okay. Okay. That helps us understand it a bit more. When you say these, these lawsuits, um, can you help us understand what that, that looks like? Yeah. So, um, the way that this like actually played out for me with an, an investor that's, um, that I work with, um, is that, uh, she ended up having a note and that she was foreclosing on the note for non-payment. Um, but what happened was, is that the way that the foreclosure uh, was done, um, she actually got, ended up getting sued for a uh, wrong foreclosure and discrimination oh, wow. and a lot of other things. Right. Um, and because of some emails that happened, you know, in connection, uh, with that foreclosure proceeding, um, she was potentially liable for uh, uh, for like over two hundred fifty thousand dollars in damages Whoa, uh, could have wow. resulted from it, right? So um, because it's not actually just the note itself, right? What people can start to allege is that you discriminated against them, and then what's called as punitive damages that go into that, which can be for an unlimited amount of money. And it's just used to punish people that they say do wrong. But from her perspective, she said, hey, I'm honest. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, guess what? 
everybody says that everybody thinks they're an honest and good person and it's never a defense all right to be that and and it's their job on the other side to paint you as a liar and as a cheat and as like the worst person possible and people are surprised that that happens uh, well that's the nature of our legal system right um what with it, good thing for her though is that she was uh, a member of our what we call as our family office she was a member of the firm which meant that we were able to step in at no cost to her and immediately start to represent her uh in that litigation um and uh, we offer that like on a subscription service uh, specifically because for these types of situations and what I was able to do for her um, because she had all the proper protection set up is get the lawsuit completely dismissed. You know, because she had set up that note inside of a series of LLC structure, that note was owned by an individual entity. Uh, be after the foreclosure of that note, trying to go after that asset, the only lawsuit they had was against that individual entity with the note being the only asset. There was really no money there they could legitimately go after, right? Uh, and so, you know, having that proper structure in place gave us the leverage to push back on them to say, hey, great, you're not going to get anything. Otherwise, she would have at least been paying a double digit settlement. Wow. What wow. a relief it must have been for her to have that. And, you know, to think of all of the people who probably don't. But, you know, I want to step back for just a sec and and kind of ask you how you think about asset protection. I, I'm guessing, but I don't know your your field well enough to know that people may have different ways they look at it. And someone like you who has helped so many people and is such an expert at it, it'd be really interesting to hear how you kind of think about asset protection. Well, the first thing I always think about is like, what things can I insure my risk on for insurance? And insurance is like going to protect you against most things most of the time, but realizing that insurance is pretty limited in the protections because it only protects you against negligence, right? Mm. And only like negligence that happens with small claims. I mean, come to find out that insurance companies uh, like to collect premiums and enjoy even more denying coverage, especially when it gets expensive, because that's their job. That's the business model, right? Of yeah. how that works, right? So when I think out of asset protection, I'm thinking, well, great, let's use the insurance. Let's be really well insured. And then after that, um, let's look at how we can defeat lawsuits and defeat people coming after us by creating anonymity and the ownership of the assets. So it looks like we qualify for food stamps if every, anybody ever comes to investigate us to say, hey, you know, is Kevin or Adam a good guy to sue? Uh, what can I find out on the public records? If I can find a lot of assets attached to your name, holy smokes, I'm filing that lawsuit right away. Because I know when you have a lot to lose, I know you're willing to pay to make sure that I'll just go away. Right. And that's right. the business of lawsuits. This is why 98% of lawsuits settle. It's not because of justice. It's because there's a game about like how much fear I can put into you to make you pay out. Right. And that's what plaintiffs do. And so when you, I think about asset protection, I think about it taking the power back. Because if I create the castle and the protection around me by hiding the assets, compartmentalizing them, um, all of a sudden I've defeated the business of lawsuits right? To make a, a really bad business decision to ever come after me. And guess what? It's hyper effective, right? As you might imagine. That is really interesting. I'm learning a ton. And that whole idea with the, the note investor being a note investor kind of terrifies me to the idea that you could get sued. Um, when I know it's a, it's a risk that investors take. And speaking of that, um, who would need asset protection, right? If I'm doing smaller transactions, you know, in, in tens of thousands of dollars worth, would I need asset protection? Or are we talking people in the millions? Who would need it? The question comes, Kevin, is what path are you on? Are you on the path of saying I'm a one-off guy? Or are you on the path of saying like, I'm building wealth by investing? And if you're saying I'm a building wealth by investing, then when you're saying, well, great. The next question I should ask myself is, what are the proven methods? What are the proven systems and processes that people that build wealth time and time again do to be able to build wealth in a consistent manner where they're always going up and to the right without major setbacks, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we work with over 2000 investors in all 50 states, right? And we work with every type of asset class from notes, single family homes, apartments, every, all, everything that has to do in touch with real estate, right? And so from working with those people, what we've been able to do is to be able to distill out what, who are the real winners and what do the real winners do? And so we analyze those people and we analyze the profiles and the data that surrounds those people. And that's what actually informs us and what kinds of decision-making is appropriate for every person. 
So the reality is everybody needs to be doing something for asset protection, right? Now, what is appropriate for you depends upon your particular situation of it. But everybody has a credit score. And at the end of the day, your credit score is an asset. So that means you need some type of barrier between you and the rest of the world that helps protect your credit score. So at the bare minimum, you still have access to capital. Mm. That's great. That's very helpful. And I'm sure a lot of people are listening to this and thinking, uh, yes, I, I want to build wealth, but right now, um, maybe, you know, I'm still kind of a, a small fry or I'm just getting started or, you know, however they think about that. And, and they think what you're talking about right now sounds great for that person who is a multimillionaire and they've got all these assets, but, um, when should investors talk to someone like you? At what point should they decide to that it's no longer a do-it-yourself thing with some kind of insurance? Yeah. So what what we did is we we tried to solve that problem a little bit of a different way, right? And through like a, a product offering that we have, um, or subscription offering rather, we call it a family office. So family office is typically what billionaires have. They'll have a team of like eight to 10 people that just manage their money, right? And one of the goals I set was, it says, well, listen, how do we help the average person? The person that has like one, one to 10 properties, one to 10 assets, right? They can't afford the $30,000 options, right? And right. those super high price attorneys, right? But those are the people that I want to help, you know, because those are the people uh, that I resonate the most with that are like, man, if I can just get here, my life turns to be exponentially better. Um, and we can solve, get them out of the rat race, right? Yeah. So what I did is I said, listen, let's go ahead and create a subscription. Let's charge $97 a month for this subscription. I'll call it the family office. And what I'm going to do is open up my team and um, of, of experts, right. And say, you can now get unlimited access to my team of experts. Uh, and which is my internal staff, uh, by email for an unlimited basis. You can join in on all of our large group coaching. Um, we're going to give you up to three consultations about your asset protection, your estate planning and your tax. Um, and then we're going to be educating you month over month through our, our live calls and group calls. So that way you can get the landscape of what it is you need. So you have like personal touches, large group, uh, touches, you have social interaction with other people that are similarly situated to you. And that way you can find in there like, okay, what makes the most sense without having to believe any one source of information. Right? right. You're going to be able to see multiple touches and then be able to triangulate that yourself to say, okay, this is what I think my path is. Cause my path wasn't to say, Hey, I'm the guru. Just believe me. Right. It was no, no, no. How do we make this really complicated world really simple and pair you with other people that have walked your shoes and you can then hear from their success about like what it is and what that's really like. I like that idea because you're right. I mean, the average person or the average investor that has, you know, a handful in their portfolio can't operate like Jeff Bezos can. It's just unfeasible. Um, and I'm glad that you have that service. It's something we'll put in the show notes for people that are absolutely interested in it. Uh, so when we talk about asset protection, it sounds like you should start early on um, and we should leverage your expertise. Now, when you say, uh, now my question is, what are the most common asset protection mistakes that, that investors are making? The biggest mistake is people that own assets in their personal name. They have cash, they have stocks, uh, they might have other assets in their personal name. And they think like, well, I'm too small, right? And uh, so I don't have to worry about this at all, right? And then what ends up happening is that uh, something happens that's catastrophic on one of their properties, right? Um, or they send an email to somebody and somebody accuses them of committing fraud that's not covered by insurance, or they get into a car accident that exceeds the limits of liability of their car insurance policy, or a number of other things that I've seen from my litigation experience as being an attorney. And now they're put in a position that says, I either have to pay this person who's trying to extort money out of me, or I get to risk being completely wiped out and maybe going bankrupt. So when we look at saying like, what is the appropriate step for people to do at a bare minimum, you should have at least one LLC because rich people don't own anything. And it's on purpose because uh, you want to be in a position that Kevin gets sued with a lawsuit. Right. And Kevin says, cool, I don't care because the worst you're going to do to me is hurt my credit score. You know, maybe, mm -hmm. but all my assets are protected inside of an anonymous LLC. You don't know where they're at and they're all protecting the LLC. So you're not going to be able to get to them. 
So good luck. Go ahead and spend your $25,000 and going through this whole lawsuit with me. You're going to get nothing at the end. And come to find out when you do that step, the lawsuit doesn't get filed. So all we have to do is create enough protection to make it enough of a pain in the butt for somebody to try to come after you to stop the lawsuit. That's it. And the beautiful part about it is if you do that, you save yourself the five to $10,000 in attorney fees you would have had to pay otherwise. And you can accomplish that protection for under $1,000. So when you're looking at an ROI of an investment to make, I really don't think there's anything better that you can do than investing inside of asset protection because there's a 90% probability over the course of your lifetime of an investor taking over 20 years that you're going to be involved in a major lawsuit. Big businesses know this, right? Investors need to come to grips with reality that over enough time, bad things are going to happen. And you're right. not going to know when they're going to happen or how they're going to happen. But if you prepare ahead of time, you're cool. Yeah, I like that. Uh, it has to give you confidence as well. It has to give you some uh, confidence, some peace of mind to continue going after it and, and not have something in the back of your, of your mind kind of um, you know, taking up bandwidth, worrying about something like that. Um, Scott, would you say there are some basic tools that everyone should have? I know, you know, I mean, I kind of think of it like um, an, an outdoorsman who has his little emergency kit that he always just throws in his backpack and takes, even if he's going on a day hike that just has some very basic essentials and he never leaves home without it. Is there something along those lines for um, investors, like an umbrella policy or, or anything like that? Yeah, the very basic things that you should have, right, um, would be uh, insurance, right? If you can't afford to do anything else, like make sure that you have solid insurance, like an umbrella policy put in place. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, is that it, when the real, when the, the problem is, is that the attorneys know something that a lot of people don't in the insurance world. And I know this from being a litigator, which is, if I want to get a quick settlement from an insurance company, because it's a little bit legitimate claim that the insurance company is going to pay for, then I sue based upon grounds that makes the insurance company pay. If I want Kevin to pay me because the grounds aren't really legitimate, but I know that I have leverage over Kevin, then I sue under grounds that I know that the insurance company is going to reject the claim. So the game is rigged against you in a lot of ways by people that know the game better than you. And so this is where it comes to be important to say, great, have the insurance policies in place because that's your first line of defense. But you, it's never enough to just have insurance. You need at least one LLC in place and ideally masking the ownership of that LLC and the assets by using trust. So that way you have both anonymity and ownership of your company, anonymity and the ownership of your assets, and also compartmentalization, a way that your assets are separated from you for liability purposes. Hmm. Nice. I like that. Okay. So having that basic protection is at the very minimum, something that you should have. So if somebody's thinking of doing things in their personal name, or if they have things in their personal name, maybe you want to consider adding a layer of protection. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I think that's at the very, very bare minimum, right? Now to get into like the details of like, how does that like really play out um, into it? Happy to um, dig into those, but really the best thing that I've seen is when people can come and like join in on the community that we've built of investors um, and start to be able to have those interpersonal conversations. Um, if people have any doubts is really like the most powerful thing, because if you're, if you're wondering ever about like, Hey, should I go do something? We'll find somebody else who's accomplished what it is that you seek to go do and then go mimic their behavior. Right. And that's the, that's the really the thrust behind it. But at the bare minimum, right. You probably, you, you need at least one LLC, um, and being able to get to that point, right, is, is just as easy as connecting uh, with somebody who's walked that course before or helped right. people walk the course before. That's, that's a great strategy to see what those who you want to be like are doing and attempt to mimic that in some way, or at least, you know, try to do what they're doing. I know I, I personally do that with, you know, I, I kind of use it almost as a, as a mentorship in a way, you know, see someone who I really admire and want to be where they are. And I, I try to do some things they're doing. Um, Scott, I have a question that is, I guess, 
maybe it's a little bit more specific than some of the others we've been asking about, but um, it's around land trusts. And I'm just curious kind of if you have thoughts on land trusts and if they are a good tool for some people to use in, in the tool belt. Yeah, absolutely. So land trusts are a very popular strategy uh, that we use, right? You can usually set up a land trust between for like around three to $500, right? Yeah. And set those up. Now you can use those in all 50 states. You can actually use land trust to own any type of property, not just land, right? Like I would consider a note a type of property, right? Your car is actually a type of property. Land trusts are structured in a way that we call them land trusts, right? But that's really, it's just a, a typical type of trust that can hold any type of property. The great part about land trusts is that they um, are allow you to hold your asset anonymously, right? Because uh, now if anybody looks at like who owns that asset, it ties back to a trust. And if you have that trust structured through a law firm, that means if anybody starts asking questions about that trust or files, any type of discovery thing in court to say, hey, give me this information. Well, now all of a sudden, all that information is now protected by the attorney client privilege, right? So it creates additional barriers and additional information security on that front. So what I do with note investors, I say, listen, you can either own the notes in your personal name like you do right now, right? Um, and now if anybody ever comes to look to sue you or ever get into a lawsuit at all, and you have to disclose what are the extent of your assets, you have to tell them, here's all the notes that I own, right? And they'll be mm -hmm. able to find out all the notes you own. But if you own um, all of your assets inside of land trusts, then all of a sudden um, people aren't able to identify that you own that because all I see is that it's owned by a trust and it's tied to a law firm and there's no other information they can get. So it looks like you qualify for food stamps uh, uh, on that. And you guys, what people don't sue beggars. Nice. Interesting. That is a very interesting uh, way that you put it. So from a land trust perspective, I, I didn't know that you could buy notes in a land trust. So that's really interesting. How does that just generally work? Can you help me understand that? Yeah. So let's say we had a property that was located at 123 Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. you know, and you'd say, great, well, I'm going to create a land trust called the 123 Main Street Trust. And now when it says who is the owner of this note, anything that's identified with the ownership of the note, it says, okay, it's the one, two, three main street trust. And that's all people would be able to pick up if they ever looked into who's the owner of the mortgage or the note. Right. Uh -huh. now, what's, what's just to blow your mind a little bit of like what's possible here is that if you take that, that note and then you push it into the land trust, you now have accomplished all the anonymity that we talked about. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you take that land trust and say, well, now my land trust is going to in turn be owned by an LLC. Now, if they sue for it or sue around it, it's now compartmentalized inside of the LLC. So land trust on its own doesn't provide you any protection from the lawsuit. It only provides you anonymity. But when you structure the, the land trust and the land trust is owned by the LLC, you get all of the liability protection from the LLC plus okay. all of the anonymity benefits of the land trust. Man, that's a nice. I love that layers. It's almost like create you're baking a cake of your protection, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> or a lasagna. I don't know. Hundred percent, man. It's it's a lasagna game. And then the biggest piece that people run into is they say, Well, isn't this gonna complicate my life? Isn't this gonna complicate my taxes? And isn't this gonna be expensive? So I knew early on, I said, listen, we got to be able, if we're looking to help the average person that's out there, we gotta be able to do this in a way that gives them the absolute best protection and doesn't cost them any more money right? And doesn't complicate their life. It can't cost people time or money if, if they're really going to do it, right? Yeah. So what we did is we structured the LLC and the land trust so that way it's completely passed through for all tax purposes. So all of your taxes stay exactly the same way they are right now, right? They just as, as if for IRS purposes, it doesn't exist at all. Um, and also there's no individual accounting or bookkeeping that you end up having to do above what you're doing right now uh, for your, any of your assets. So it, it ends up being like this play where you're able to say, cool, I can get all the protections and I don't have to spend any extra time or money uh, to be able to have just like what the very, uh, very wealthiest and very rich people are doing. I love that. And a minute, uh, and being anonymous, <laughs> yeah. hard word for me today, I guess. Uh, I wanted to ask you as far from your experience when we're talking about uh, litigating and risk for asset protection, what asset class have you seen uh, garners the most lawsuits or where people yeah. are the most sue happy? Yeah, well, really, real estate's actually one of the most uh, litigious uh, types of assets, right? A lot of people are interacting with that asset, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have everybody that's there that's in and out of the property, right? Um, but as a note investor, 
Um, what you should really be worried about is, you know, anything that happens typically around for any type of foreclosure proceeding or in instances where your note might be um, counter to any change in the law, right? That would come up, right? Where they say, hey, you're actually, you know, uh, committing some type of Dodd-Frank violation, um, or you have some type of usury provision, um, or that there's an allegation that, you know, um, you're being discriminatory in the way that you're foreclosing, right? Um, so uh, any, all real estate is risky, from a litigation perspective, sure. uh, but notes just have their special kind of risk yeah, because of the way uh, that they're structured. That's interesting. Scott, Scott, as someone who invests in large multifamily syndications, um, are, are there strategies I, I should be considering uh, when investing in those? It, it feels different than if I were gonna buy a rental house, for example, right? Um, it, it, you know, some CPAs will tell you, you can invest in those as an individual. You don't need to invest in those as an LLC from a tax perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just curious from, from an asset protection perspective, what that looks like. Are, are you protected already by the LLC of the syndication? Because they're, you know, that LLC is, is, um, taking control of the property or should you be doing something else individually as an investor in that syndication? Um, so the real question really turns on Adam is um, who owns the asset? And when you're investing in syndication, do you own it in your personal name? No. Okay. So are, how are you making that investment in the syndication? I, I would be investing in the syndication in my name as a, as a limited partner in the right. deal. So now you own a partial equity interest inside of a corporation, yeah? Right. That's into it, right? So then the question becomes as if somebody sues Adam, can they garner his partial interest in the corporation? And what that actually turns on is a different question, which is called charging order protection. That says, if I sue Adam, can I get to his interest inside of an LLC? And that actually depends on where the LLC is formed, right? Wow. And so you'll have limited protection if somebody sues the asset and tries to come after you, but you might not have protection if somebody sues you and tries to come after your particular ownership interest in the LLC, right? So yeah. this is why I say, listen, if you don't know and you can't control that, the best thing for you to do is have all of your assets, including your syndication investments, held inside of your personal asset holding company. Because in an ideal scenario, Adam shouldn't own anything anymore. Adam should have an asset holding company, uh, usually either a Delaware statutory trust or a series LLC. And that company should then in turn own every asset that he makes. And if he makes investments inside of syndications or in other areas, he should make those investments through a land trust. So that way his name doesn't pop up on any of the types of investment documentation that people might be researching because you probably don't want other investors to know all of the other things that you're researching if you're inside of the same classes, right? And you right. probably don't want other people to be able to search for that information as well too, right? So even though your CPA is right, that it doesn't make a difference from a tax perspective because as a single member LLC and using uh, land trusts, right? It's all the same pass through. It's all going to go to your personal tax return. There is a huge difference in the liability protection. Interesting. So it sounds like that missing piece, like let's say you graduate to investing. You say, I want to maximize my taxes. Then that asset protection makes sure that, uh, while you have the, the IRS at bay, if you will, with the taxes that the, the, words are hard for me today. So excuse me, the justice system is kind of, uh, you're protected on that end with the asset protection, right? That's the idea. It's almost like a, uh, you thinking about your wealth holistically. Yeah, that, that's right. Right. And that's one of the reasons actually why I formed Royal Legal Solutions, because it's questions that are just like Adam's, right? Because I, I, I'm going to guess here, Adam, and take a stab at it. And I don't mean to single you out on this, but this is your, your perfect test case for like a typical client that would come into Royal Legal, right? Because they say, hey, I'm a smart guy. I've done a lot of research and I've talked to professionals, right? And the, the problem that happens is that um, it's that doing the research in the modern era prevents has two major problems. One is that professionals only typically know their particular lens because most of the time they're a professional that hasn't made money the same way you're making money. Right. So you actually need professionals that make money the same way you make money to really know the 360 degrees of how all of the parts have to work together 
mm-hmm. to be able to have the optimal solution. Otherwise, you end up with a partial solution or a suboptimal solution with it, right? And that's yeah. why I really formed Royal Legal Solutions because I was like, wow, this is a really difficult problem that's hyper technical, right? And so yeah. it's great. That sounds like a great opportunity for me to really be able to fundamentally impact the way that people are living their lives and doing business. And, and that's where we structured the team to be able to talk. I train my team to be able to have that level of knowledge. So that way when people come in, they're like, cool, no, no, I see it. Cool. That's cool that you understand the little pieces. Let me blow your mind with how these pieces actually connect up a little bit differently. Yeah, it makes sense. And I really like the way you're able to, and you're, you're able to explain a very complicated topic in a way that makes complete sense. Well, thanks, Adam. I appreciate that. I work really hard at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we know you know it, right? When you can break it down for people who are not yeah. as smart as Adam and I, and we're like, oh, wow, well, we totally get why you did and the value of it. Um, and, and speaking awesome. of that, right, while we know that this is a highly technical thing as far as leveraging your experts, if somebody just wants to learn a cursory information, kind of to be convinced that they need this, what would be a book or a podcast or something that you would recommend to say, hey, just check this out, get the gears turning? Yeah, so I have something that's even better than that, right? Because we already have, you know, I think 10 books out right now on on all different types of asset protection, estate planning, tax. We give those all, all the books away for free because I'm a proponent of saying, listen, it's our job to actually educate everybody as best we can right? It would be like the single beacon of clarity of information amongst like the morass of, of experts that uh, conflict with each other and seemingly disagree about everything and all the confusion that's out there. So I said, listen, we're going to give away all the info for free on that. And that you can find that through like our Facebook group and our website. But I took it one step further with my team and said, listen, we're going to actually um, do something that's probably unheard of inside of like the legal and tax world. And so as I have anybody that comes to our website, um, the Royal legal solutions.com website and fill and, and clicks the banner at the top of the page. It's like the get a price or take a quiz and actually fills out that quiz from that quiz. We actually get all of the basic information we need about who you are as investor. What are all those key KPIs that we use to be able to profile you to see what are the best practices that people are similarly situated to you using that we've seen. And then we tailor the information that we give you with our actual team to say, hey, this is the info this person actually needs. And so that way you actually have the customized tailor info that's exactly to your asset class, where you're at paying in your taxes, what income levels you have, and the other key indicators that are there in that quiz before you ever give us a dollar. And the idea being there, you should have all the information you need at that point to be really dangerous. You should know more than 99% of the other experts that are out there um, by that point. And that the only reason to really do business with us is because you want to be part of our community. You want more education that's more personalized, or you want us to go build something for you. Nice. That's fantastic. And, you know, I, I think it's really evident in having this discussion how critical it is to have someone like you as a member of your team. If you're an investor, uh, I just, I just think it's so important. And I love how easy and accessible you make it for people, even before they get to, you know, a more successful point in their investing career. So Scott, we wouldn't be the tech guys who invest if we didn't ask you a good tech question. So (laughs) we thought, uh, we thought we might as well stay in theme here and ask you what one of your favorite technologies is for protecting assets or maybe has to do with asset protection in some way. Wow. My favorite uh, tool for that. Well, one of the coolest tools that uh, we've been using recently um, into this is actually a tech tool used by first American uh, title company. It's called datatree.com into that. And uh, how we've been using that is we can actually pull uh, profiles using any type of identifying information uh, about you and being able to find all listing out all of the assets, notes, or investments that you've made, anything that ties to public records. It's a huge database ag- aggregator, right? Nice. So we actually will run some of those types of security analysis for our clients. And I just think that's the coolest tool ever that you can like walk in there and then inside of like 30 seconds, I can be like, hey, listen, here's, um, I think everything that you own and here's everything I think you've done in the past. Wow. And, and then we use that to be able to say like, how, how comfortable are you with that? That I can find that out within 30 seconds for $7, you know? Yeah, that is cool. You know, that is really neat. 
Um, yeah, I use it. And then just think about all the things Google has on you, right? <laughs> For sure. Hey, data yeah. is powerful. It really is. And there's so many things you can do with it. So I love that data tree plug. That's something I use as a note investor, figuring out, oh, I get the, you know, who the borrower is. Maybe do they own something else? I look at it from that perspective. Or maybe if, if they're not performing borrower, maybe they have another property that I can help them solve or what's the problem here, right? So it helps paint that holistic picture as we're talking about it. Well, Scott, this was awesome. Uh, we, I know I learned a lot. And I'm sure Adam would probably say he learned a lot too. Um, and we know that you're going to bring tons of value to our listeners. That being said, if they wanted to reach you, how could they do that? Yeah, the best thing to do is just go to royallegalsolutions.com and then take, do the, take the quiz at the top of the page there. Click that banner and then fill out the quiz that's on that next page. And that's going to give us all the information that we need to have a productive first conversation with you and also know like what's going to be the tailored information that's going to be powerful for you. That's the best practices that are people that are similarly situated to you um, of the 2000 clients that we've uh, that we currently have uh, as part of our community. And so all you have to do to be able to get that level of information that would normally cost you hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars, if you could even find the right person to talk to about it, um, is just go to royallegalsolutions.com and click the ticket quiz or get a price banner at the top of the page and then fill out that quiz on the, on the sub subsequent page. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, like I said, I learned a lot. You did a great job of breaking down the complex ideas of asset protection and sold me on like, maybe I should, I should take this quiz. So thank you so much for all the value you brought to us today, Scott. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Hello, TGWI Insiders. We'd like to talk to you about our big goal for 2021 that we're determined to hit, but we need your help to hit it. Our goal is to get 250 positive comments on Apple Podcasts. You can help us in less than one minute, even as you're listening to this podcast episode. On your phone or computer, you can do this in three simple steps. First, search for us on your Apple Podcast app. Second, navigate to our podcast page by clicking our logo. And finally, scroll to the very bottom where it says leave a review to leave us a five-star review and a positive comment. That's it. Quick and easy. You can also get these step-by-step -step instructions by going to tgwipodcast.com forward slash review. It's fast, easy, and would help us a ton. Thanks for your support, insiders. That's it for this episode of Tech Guys Who Invest. This is Adam. This is Kevin. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast for the latest episode updates and to receive additional investor insights to help you invest wisely and safely. You can join the TGWI Insiders community at tgwipodcast.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, we would love to connect with you. The best way to reach us is by sending us an email at techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody.